Hi, I'm Ted Ross. Welcome to my workshop. It's a small workshop, so we utilize the space indoors and outdoors both. And you can see that we're doing a little bit of woodwork out here preparing some green wood that we just got. It's not a perfect workshop, uh, but a work in progress. And um, hopefully you'll see some things that'll give you ideas for your workshop. Uh, or maybe you'll have some ideas for me for, for my workshop as well by seeing this. So kind of hot out here today. So let's go inside and take a look. Ah, a lot cooler in here. Feels good. So this is the inside of the shop. It's a 20 by 20 shop. When we first got this shop, uh, the walls were bare essentially. It was just two by four framed in there. We, uh, the windows were in place already, which is great because we use those for cross ventilation in here in the summertime. But uh, we insulated the whole place and we actually put electrical in so we have electrical above the workbench all the way around. So there was a plug here and there, but we put some more electrical plugs in it. Insulated and plywood the ceiling and plywood the, the walls and then put pegboard wherever we thought we could utilize hanging things on the wall. Did all of that before we moved any equipment and so forth in there. The other part is the ceiling lights. So it was fluorescent lighting. Uh, there was three or four strips in here when we got it. I put those back in, but uh, then I bought a couple LED lights. And after I put those in, I was sold on them. It made a huge difference, not only in brightness, but the quality of the light actually was so much better. So that's the inside, the basic inside of it. Uh, and then the, the next step really is to talk a little bit about storage in the attic. Uh, I have a walk-up attic and I'll show you a little bit of that as well. So storage in the uh, workshop, I got storage of my finishes down over here. And over on this side, I got a unit, a little shelving unit that has all the same kind of stuff in it on that. And then up above here, I've got my manuals and stuff that I keep up here. So I've got place, glass vases and so forth. This Some of these are tools and so forth I store up here. And as you can see, pegboard. Uh, laid out here uh, on the wall. I'll talk a little bit more about some of that later. Got storage down here. I've got paper bags that I use for drying materials and so forth. And I throw some materials in there sometimes for dry. And then we've got all these drawers down here and they're labeled. I got a drawer full of extra chucks and so forth or, or accessories for chucks are in there. Air tools and plastic bags, embellishments and stuff over here and um, carving stuff down there in that bottom drawer. Okay, so over here, uh, I built a storage rack to store plywood and miscellaneous flat boards and so forth because, you know, I do other projects besides wood turning and I needed a place to store the materials. The first rack is a, it can handle a four by eight sheet. So that's a, this section here, which is about a foot wide and it's enough to handle most of what I want to store. Then this bottom piece is four by four size, so I can put up to a four foot tall piece in that. This is two by four and this is one by four at the top. So it works out really well for me. You can see I've got different size pieces of, of plywood in there. And then in front of that, I've got an old uh, garden rack and I put uh, my materials on here after I turn them and I want to dry them, especially my hollowing ones because you know they're ready in two, three, four weeks time. So I can put them on this rack and get back to them uh, fairly soon then. And they it's a uh, wire mesh, so it has time to dry out. Over here, this uh, cabinet really supports these two grinders and down below, we've got some clamps and so forth. Over here uh, on the top, I've got some some pieces of for storage that I've turned some of those pieces, some of them are for boxes. And then I've got some small hand equipment uh, stored over here, router bits, jigsaw, hand planers, belt sander, router up in the corner there. Uh, oh, this is a good thing to point out. Now I'm back here also storage for my my uh, Forstner bits I set up on the wall. This cabinet uh, is our workbench, so we do a lot of work over here. Uh, Alex does a lot of um, jewelry making, and uh, this is really his center for doing that uh, that work. And then we've got cabinets, uh, drawers down here, I should say, with sandpaper, sanders, drills, um, measuring equipment, devices, and so forth. And then there's a lot of hand tools, as you can see, stored on here as well uh, uh, along there and some more shelves up here with some different things. Over on this side, more turned roughed out objects. I've got some uh, nice burl wood up there. 
that's been drying for several years. It's, it's ready to come down and be finished. Uh, and then some materials for boxes and so forth. And then last is, the, is our refreshment storage for our ice cream bars and popsicles. We looked at the storage down there. Let's go up in the attic and look at the storage up there. Little latch there on the door to hold it up for us. Come on up. Here's my lights. Just installed those LED, the old fluorescent light there on the side. Um, so I've got a lot of flat work um, up here stored. So, you know, two by fours and I got a trim rack over there on the side. This is the planer I have. I haven't actually used it yet. I just uh, acquired this extra shop vacs and so forth. And some of my wood, I've got small wood rack, wood pieces in here to be turned. And there's some stuff in these bags that is turned and is drying in this rack. A few extra tools stored in this rack. My air compressor sits up here, so I don't have to listen to the noise from that. And I've got an air line that goes down there. And then this rack here is full of, of uh, wood burls. I got to get to work on that and start turning them. And down on this end, then I've got a few more tools, um, some lathe, extra lathe tools, hollowing tools, buffing tools. That's it for up here. Let's go back downstairs. You can see it's a little bit warm up here in the attic. <laughs> So let's go back downstairs. So let's talk about the placement of the tools in here and how I have things laid out. And the fact that it's a small shop means that things have to be portable. We have a workbench over here. This is uh, Alex's uh, jewelry making station. This is a piece of Corian we have up here. So a nice flat hard surface that he can work on. He's got some sandpaper tape down there. And then we have this portable workstation here for him. So all we gotta do is pop these wheels down here and we can move this any place we want to. So it's easily portable. We've got a disc sander on here, a small belt sander on the front and a, and a saber saw over here and a uh, pole sander down here on the bottom. And we have a vacuum system hooked up to it. So we can hook onto it to vacuum uh, while we're running any of these. These here we hook to our vacuum system, which I'll introduce in a few minutes. Uh, to make that all work. Over here in the middle, we have a work table. Uh, I use this mainly for finishing, but this is also portable. So it's on wheels and we can move this any place in the shop that we need it. If, uh, if we're working over here and we want to have that close by, we can, we can move this uh, around to wherever we need it to place it. We use it also or a place to hold tools and so forth for us while we're working on this, which is one of our lathe stations and then we have over here the uh, other lathe, small lathe. I use this mainly for buffing, but we do do small work like uh, jewelry, rings. And then uh, the workhorse, really, this is the one that I use the most, this lathe, and everything is set up around it. And I'll take you through uh, that in more detail in a few minutes. Over here, um, I've got some hooks in the ceiling for, for drying my pieces. If I have a hollow form that I've done, and I can hang it up there on this, on these racks so I can do, I got three or four hooks in the ceiling here. I got some over there too, uh, that I can hang stuff on. If I'm doing a bunch of pieces, I can hang those up in a dry. Um, this is a 360 camera mount. So you'll see some, some views of that uh, in the video as, as we progress along, but we just made that out of a simple piece of plywood with a, with a quarter inch by 20 bolt through it. My air filtration system here to help keep the dust down and there, we just installed that a month or so ago. And then over on this side on the ceiling, while we're on the ceiling, is my heater. So this is an electric heater. And in the winter time, uh, we're insulated, but it still can get kind of cold out here. So uh, this is my dust collection system right now. But I put this uh, dust deputy in here, uh, Oneida dust deputy. And it's really helped uh, quite a bit, actually, because it filters out all the, the dust in the sawdust and so forth, puts it down here in, uh, in a five-gallon bucket. And then I've got this hooked on here with a two-and-a-half inch coming out the bottom and then an um, inch-and-a-quarter uh, line coming out of the top of it. And I hook that to my orbiting sander that I use for, for sanding on the outside of pieces. I use this quite a bit for that. 
And then the big hose is hooked here to the, to the other end, and I have magnets on this, and I can place this um, either right here or on top, or a lot of times I put it right on my tool rest, and wherever I move, move my tool rest, my vacuum cleaner moves with me. And then the second part of having this here is I can, it's a quick disconnect that I have set up on this, and I can hook this on over here to this vacuum piece easy enough, just couple that in to it. And uh, it has now have vacuum hooked up to the belt sander, but if I move the hose over here, it hooks up to the disc sander. And we have a switch down here on the floor that we just hit the switch, the vacuum cleaner turns on for us. So it helps, as you can see, we still have quite a bit of dust, but it helps. We probably get 80% of the dust right now and we're working towards getting, you know, 95 or better percent of the dust. And uh, like I said, it's work in progress around here. So everything is placed pretty well in here for us to work and get 80% of our work done. But occasionally it's not. Occasionally we need to move things around. Let me show you a few samples of that, of uh, some of the mobility we have. This is how I get my big wood in. So I can open up both these doors and get my cart and bring the big stuff in. I can bring it over here to, to work on my bandsaw. So move a few things around in less than a minute. We got the table saw out and it's ready to be used. So if I wanted to process some, some bigger wood on the bandsaw, uh, I can move that table back if I had wanted to work in here with some bigger stuff. When I'm done, shove it back over there where I got it from. Done. So let's take a look at this lathe, my lathe number two. Uh, just recently acquired this lathe. It's a 3520, so it has a 20 inch swing on it. I've got my my gouges set up over here. They're on a mobile stand so I can move them around. I've got these pads on the floor here and you'll see these in front of all the lathes. So when you're standing for a long time at the lathe, these make a huge difference. And they're just interlocking so I can add or take away from them uh, pieces of foam matting and it uh, works really well. But um, this lathe is a bigger lathe. It's a little heavier duty than my Laguna lathe. And the one thing, one of the things I do like about it is uh, the mobility of the on-off switch. So I can put it on in the front here and I can run my lathe from up front here. Really good for coring because my other one, I have to reach over the top to shut it off. I've got two banjos on it. When you're working on big stuff, having a banjo on the back side and a banjo on the front side makes a big difference because a lot of times you can't get the banjo underneath the material. To, you need to do some work on the back side of it. But I was talking about doing this for coring, so why don't I show you how I set it up for coring so you can see what that looks like. So here I have it set up for coring. I wanted to show you that this is kind of in the way to work in here. So uh, with this lathe, I can move this down here to the end, loosen this up. And then swing this away. So then I can have this set up with my coring tool. When I'm coring with the tool, as I move along here, so I'm outside the bowl, and as I move into the bowl, you can see I can see exactly where I'm at. And there I can mark lines out here, which I normally do for the bottom. So I might have a line saying that's where I want the tool to come out on the bottom. And I can see this line spinning as the bowl's going and then I can, I can visualize all the way in there. It's, uh, it's got plenty of power for me to do that. It's, um, I have, again, two rests, so I can do work on the back side if I, if I need to do that, and I don't have to take the, the piece back off there to, to do any work on it. So that's how I set up for coring. Um, my McNaughton coring system on it with a camera mounted on, on the unit on it and my visualizer over here, my tailstock swung out of the way and I can do all my coring uh, set up on here. Next I'll show you how I do hollowing.
So now I have it set up for hollowing. And so I've got the uh, visualizer set up. You can see my tool there. However, uh, working at it like this, I'm working kind of across the lathe here and things are kind of in the way. So with the, with the tailstock swung out, I can now take and move this whole thing down my headstock down as well to where I want to be. So now I can work on this and uh, I can work from the end of it so I can I can work in here like that with a tool back and forth however I want to. So when I'm either coring or hollowing I can turn on the uh, lathe uh, right here and I don't have to reach over the top of it. So uh, last thing I want to show you on this is that where I store my hollowing system, the visualizer and so forth. And so I'll take this over there and show you right now. And my screen's right here. Anyways, that's how lathe two is set up. And the next thing up, uh, I'll show you a little bit about how I have lathe number one set up. Lathe number one, this is how I have it set up in here. I use this lathe most of the time. I've got two halogen lights here to help light everything up. Works really well. I've got my tool rack up here with my tools so I can see the ends of my tools. I've got my shield up here for my face mask. I've got my sandpaper set up here, the five inch pieces, and you can see the labels I have on them, what size they are across there. If I'm Standing on the outside, I use my five inch. If I'm standing on the standing on the inside, I have my two inch or three inch. They're quick couplers. <clears throat> then I've got some of my chucks set up over here. My air compressor line with my uh, uh, for my air sander or for blowing things out and so forth. Then this is just miscellaneous other stuff. You know, some of my parting tools and so forth are on there. Some of my drives. I've got additional drives. Um, headstock drives, four-point drives, and multi-point drives here. I got my main tool rest that I put in here all the time. And then over on the side here, I've got my hollowing tools. You can see I got a whole slew of them down here that I use just depending on what I'm doing. Here I have my, my mask and uh, headphones. And so whenever I'm sanding, uh, and sometimes when I'm turning, depending on what I'm turning, I've got this mask on all the time. I've got the vacuum cleaner, of course, going and my headphones to protect my ears. Uh, underneath, I've got this barrel, and uh, this saves me a lot. Uh, so I move this around a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's, it's half full of chips right now. I just emptied it yesterday. For hollowing, I have to, do have to lift this off here, but this slides off the end. That headstock moves down here as well, so I can work here on the end with my hollowing tools right here to get things done. So that's about it inside the shop. Probably the only thing left to show you is how I prepare some of the wood, the area that I do that outside the shop uh, before we bring it in here to actually start uh, turning the wood. The last area that we want to look at is outside where I prepare the wood before we bring it into the shop and do the work uh, on the lathe. So I've got these, uh, these blocks here. Over here I've got a, a wood rack. Uh, once I cut the wood up, and uh, sometimes I seal the end, sometimes I don't, I can stack it up here. So you can see I've got quite a bit of wood stacked up here. Um, then I've got some wood here that's not on the rack. Still hasn't been really cut up. But a lot of these I use for hollow, hollowing, and so I don't do anything more than come out of here and whack a piece off and take it in the shop. But I've got these blocks set up here and I can take a block of wood if I want to cut it in half. I can put it on my rack and I can use these. I just use these wedges here, take my chainsaw, cut it in half or whatever I'm going to do. All my mess and stuff stays out here. Chainsaw is outside, essentially not in, the, not in the shop. So that's one area of my wood process. Let me show you some wood that I do have processed, uh, cut up, essentially in more of a plank type forms that I keep behind the shop. So this is the wood pile I have of processed wood. You can see I've got a lot of wood, a lot of wood here right now. Uh, but some of this isn't dry yet. I got some of this last fall. It's ash. I've got all the way down about 20 feet of, uh, of wood that's stacked up in here right now. Down there, that stuff's all dry and ready to go. 
this is still drying out. So uh, I've got enough wood here to last me for a couple of years uh, at least. And uh, I should stop getting wood because I've got more than I can handle right now. So that's the tour of my shop. We did the outside and the inside. And hopefully uh, you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got something out of it that will help you in your workshop. Maybe you have some ideas for me. That'd be great too. Most everything I've got in there is because I learned from other people. And so I hope that you can learn something from me. Thanks for watching and uh, happy turning.